Alrighty, we find ourselves on the 19th day of Advent, December 17th, and today we'll hear the second of two installments from the prophet Isaiah. Yesterday we heard that Isaiah prophesies that a child will be born for us, a son given to us, and he will be a wonderful counselor, Prince of Peace. The fulfillment of that prophecy comes through another prophecy, the one that we're going to hear about today. Isaiah tells us what happens when this Prince of Peace comes. Let's listen to Isaiah chapter 11, verses 6 through 9. And as we're listening to it, ask yourself if it evokes anything familiar in your mind or in your heart or in your memory. We'll talk about that afterwards. It helps to have the right page. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall feed, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The sucking child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the adder's den. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And a little child shall lead them. This, my good friends of Christ, is the child given to us, the son born for us, that Isaiah prophesies as we heard yesterday. Does it evoke anything, though, to you, this? Let's read again. The wolf dwelling with the lamb, the leopard lying down with the kid, the calf, the lion, and the fatling, all together. The cow and the bear feeding, the young lying down together. Lion eating straw like the ox, and a child playing by an asp or an adder's lair will not be harmed. What does this evoke? But nothing less from the very beginning of creation, Eden, where in Eden there is no death, there is no destruction, there is no killing and no slaughter. Remember that when God creates man and woman, he tells them, I give dominion to you of all creation, and to you I give you every fruit of every leaf-bearing tree for food. And I give the same for the animals. I give them the plants to eat. What do we hear in Eden? Everyone is vegetarian. There is no death at all of any animal for human consumption or even for animal consumption. There is no death at all in God's holy garden. We hear in the conclusion of today's prophecy from Isaiah that there will be no death at all on God's holy mountain. He will restore what sin has distorted and attempted to destroy. He will renew creation so that once again, what are today natural enemies will be what they originally once were, supernatural friends. There will be no death, no harm, no destruction. There will only be life. Oh, you might wonder, well, when, when did the first slaughter happen in the garden? I mean, weren't Adam and Eve? Did they eat meat at some point in time? You know, obviously in the scripture we have many, many people eating meat. And by the way, just letting you know that this is no endorsement whatsoever uh, of vegetarianism or um, any indictment of eating meat. These are given to us. We're perfectly allowed to eat them. They're for our benefit and for our health. And we hope that they're, um, that it's all done ethically and, and reverently for God's creation. But nevertheless, when does this death of the animals begin in Eden? It's not for eating purposes. It's actually for clothing. 
when Adam and Eve take the forbidden fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they realize that they're naked and then they are ashamed. And so they hide themselves. And they hide themselves with fig leaves. So they literally hide themselves and then they figuratively hide themselves. But then what happens? When God casts them out of the garden, he gives them leather garments to wear. Leather loincloths, leather drapings, leather garments. Where does leather come from? It's animal hide. Because of the sins of our two parents, of our original two parents, death has come into Eden. And that death begins not only with the casting out of man or woman from the garden, but also the death of animals. What is restored, however, with this child savior? Life. All death is destroyed and there's only unity, life, oneness. Harmony once again between man and God, man and his or her fellow man. And by saying man, I say that in general, the, the general human person. So there's harmony again between the human person and the human person. There's harmony between the human person and a creation. And there's harmony between the human person and him or herself. Saints in the making, that's what you and I have to look forward to with this child who will be born to us. This child who will lead the wolf and the lamb to lie down together in complete peace. The good shepherd, you see, not only protects his sheep, he also tames the wolf. Saints in the making, as you and I pray today, let us ask the Lord to tame the wolf in our heart of any unkindness, any lack of charity, anything that is sinful, anything that destroys life, even if it's the destruction of the dignity of a human person, denigrating them, calling them names, mocking them, not forgiving them. Let us ask for the Lord to tame that within us so that what was once wild might now, by grace, be tamed and follow along with Christ's command to love one another as he himself has loved us. We can only do this by making space for grace. 